Okay, here's the Echo Cocoon House in Kanab, Utah. Right now we're looking at the, uh, the exterior of the panels and the black stuff you see is going to be the uh, rain barrier and the air tightness barrier. Today they're trying to get the roof on the house, the rolling roof, roof trusses or joists in this case. Because they got to get it uh, weatherized as soon as possible. Panels in, panels went in last week. It was nice and dry for the straw. Last time I was here they were putting in the plates and got the first corner in. As I walk inside the house, I'll be able to see the panels more clearly. The Echo Cocoon straw panels. You can see their, the individual panels themselves. See the straw inside. I push against this. Feels almost like a matrix. Nice firm mattress. And then the panels themselves are stitched together with screws, sit on top of a, a plate that goes onto a double foundation system. So the outside foundation is a stem wall, the inside foundation is a thickened slab. And then the roof weight is distributed to both the outside and the inside of the panels. So they only need two by four material. They don't need two by sixes, Two by eights, very simple lumber package for these panels. Very low impact and materials. Talking with the guys here, the framers, they want to do SIPs and they want to do ICFs and steel, all this other stuff, foam. They just love things that take a lot of resources and money, but don't provide the same performance in the end of the day. So this is the proof in the pudding. See if these things work better than traditional American systems that uh, can be quite carbon heavy and fairly low efficiency and somewhat expensive to boot. So as you can tell that the panels, the lintels for instance, are held up by these ply pre-cut pieces of plywood for the window box. So what they do is that they'll start with a corner screw the corner in first, and then build the entire wall out. So what they'll do is they'll put the corner in, corner in, put in the panel, put in the lower panel, and then the next panel, and then put the plywood in, the plywood framing for the window here, and then they'll throw the lintel on top of that. That way they can get the proper spacing, and then they erect the panels one by one throughout the entire wall and then to the next corner. And only once they get everything put together and squared up will they attach it to the base plate. I think these panels went in pretty slow. First time the crew used this system they think they can frame it quicker, which is definitely true. But you can't necessarily get your insulation, your air tightness bar barrier in as quickly. So overall, this is probably with an experienced crew, probably take about half the time as an insulation crew, an air tightness crew, and the framing crew. Uh, the corners. They're actually framing them with a little bit of tolerance, a little bit smaller tolerance at times. In that case, you have to put in a piece of plywood to make sure it uh, filled the gap and make sure that it's not oversized. You can tell the full height of the panels can make for a pretty generous living space. 
is about up to 10 feet or so. For the exterior, they put in the Mento 3000 membrane, rolled it over the roof, and then on top of the roof, they put in, and underneath of the, uh, or I'm sorry, on top of the Mento 3000, then they put their truss plates. It looks like they put a piece of plywood too. What those truss plates are doing is they're protecting the Mento, so that's your air barrier. And then once that air barrier goes in, it flips up over the roof up onto the bottom of the ceiling. And then that's attached to Intello. And then with the Intello stapled up, they'll insulate from the inside, probably with a cellulose material or some sort of fiber insulation. And that'll complete the airtightness layer from the walls and the roof. Of course, it's on a slab floor. So underneath the slab is a, is a, is a, I believe there's a plastic membrane underneath the slab, but the slab is also airtight. They just have to make sure the penetrations through the slab are airtight. So that's how they deal with the airtightness in this particular project is from the exterior. The plastic on the inside is just temporary just to keep it, um, from getting wet and when they put the roof on they'll finish that they'll have to route out the middle of these things to run all their wiring or if there's any exterior plumbing which doesn't look like in this project there is but definitely for wiring for light switches all that good stuff they're going to have to route that in through the panel itself similar to a SIPS wall system so far Looks really pretty nice. As I said, you know, the framers think they can do this faster with regular materials. I mean, sure, if you're doing a two by six wall, you can frame that a lot faster, but this is essentially a, what we'll call a double wall system with an airtightness layer and insulation layer inside of it. Um, of course, it's a carbon sink, um, you know, who cares about carbon on the building site? Well, we do when we talk about doing this over and over again. So the less materials that are highly processed, the more materials that are low processed, called a farm to wall system, the better off our building infrastructure will get. Uh, the fire rating of this project is actually quite good too, especially with the proper siding material. If, you're, if you use a steel or a stucco or a fiber cement board on top of this, the wall panel itself can does not hold fire, if you can believe it. In fact, it's resistant to fire for up to 120 minutes. It's rated for. So this house will do quite okay in smoke. It'll be airtight with the ventilation system. When there's a fire, you can literally turn off the ventilation system to keep smoke damage from hitting the house itself. Don't know what the airtightness strategy is yet to jump that sh that uh, interior wall, which is a structural wall. You can tell by the two by six framing. That'll be sheared as well for the stiffness. It's a great project, really small. Whole thing fit in a single container, pretty cool. So, great to see Utah's first Echo Cocoon house. And then, of course, there is an amazing view. There you go. So, we're in Utah. When it's done, I think it will be available to rent for Airbnbs. So on the back porch, check out the very beautiful mountain, check out the Grand Canyon and all the other amazing places around here.